how, from the concerns of the present to a celebration of the past, namely Rover's continuing celebration of the Mini. Its 30th birthday party was held this summer, and Becky Adam was invited along. 120,000 people and 25,000 minis converged on Silverstone for what must have been the biggest gathering ever to pay homage to a single mark. They were here to celebrate the minis 30th birthday, the little car that revolutionised 60s motoring. Within six years of its introduction in 1959, a million people had bought one and the enthusiasm continues unabated. At Silverstone, mini clubs mushroomed, arriving from all parts of the country. They were joined by old and young alike from all corners of the world. Mini appeal has spread across generations as well as the globe. This neat little continental model is certainly easy to park and the modifications were completed in an afternoon. All enthusiasts seem to agree that small is definitely beautiful. It was very far ahead of its time. I don't think there's any car that's 30 years old today it's as nice to drive as the Mini was, so and still is. Japanese car is a, so complicated, many things working by electric. But Mini is uh, very simple. Actually, I got addicted to them because my husband was addicted to them. It's just a disease that we have. They're just so cute, everybody gets attached to them. They're like a pet you like to hug and take home. <laughs> I used to call my car Min. Min 1, Min 2, Min 3, Min 4. Min 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. By 80, I should be on to min number 29. 29 mins, folks, at nearly an hour. Everyone remembers those early minis with an 850cc engine, 10-inch wheels, one at each corner, and those famous pull-string doors. They sold for under 500 pounds. Later changes in design included a radically different front end on Mini Clubman's for 1969 and on the 1275 GT. Initially, mini sales were slow as people got used to this odd little car, but the craze soon caught on. It took a, a while to, to get underway because the car was so unusual and people had to get used to this idea of a car designed to look small but be big inside, to have a transverse engine and where you were sat much nearer the front than normally you would be. And once people accepted the idea that this car could perform, that this car had style, that this car had economy and this car was safe, then the whole thing started to bang and it's never looked back from there. Many attempts at mini derivatives were stopped at the prototype stage. This one, designed by Michelotti, was an early attempt at something sporty. You can see why it never made production. The mini's birthday celebrations certainly weren't just a time for serious admiration of museum pieces. The occasion was a weekend of fun, often very energetic for club enthusiasts. This group of American Mini owners, and yes, they're into them too, travelled over 5,000 miles to release some surplus energy and join in the fun. And the Minis came in all shapes and sizes, proving that smaller isn't necessarily better, larger appears to be even worse, and some don't even bear talking about. It appears Izigoni's got it right first time. John Cooper was the man who persuaded BMC to let him develop the first hot mini. All the racing boys had minis when they first came out and I thought it was about time they put more power into it. And I went to see a Sigonis and he, we went to see George Harriman and he said take one away and do it. We took one away and put one of our racing engines in the car, disc brakes, and took it back and he thought it was fantastic. And I said uh, you've got to build a thousand of them to get it homologated. He said we'll never sell a thousand. Anyway, they sold 150,000 in the end. And Cooper are still in business. You supply the 1989 model, and they supply the boost in performance, from 43 to 64 HP, plus a new grille and set of alloy wheels. It may not be the original Cooper S, but it's quick, unleaded, and perfect for today's traffic, and I want one. The ERA turbocharged version comes with a modified A-series engine, upgraded front and rear suspension, and improved brakes. For around £12,000, you get a Mini that does 0 to 60 in 7.8 seconds with a claimed top speed of 115. That's not too bad, and the car would probably appeal to the new enthusiast. British racing automobiles have developed this supercharged 1300cc limited edition. 
It has a sumptuous hide interior and performance is comparable with the ERA Mini. But with the dubious body kit and a horrendous price tag of £30,000, this one's surely destined for export. This 1959 prototype failed the Army's tests, so they sold it as the Moak and it passed with flying colours. Now, 30 years on, we're all here celebrating this historic occasion and the world's biggest mini traffic jam. 5,000 cars stretching as far as the eye can see. Izagonis would have been proud. Little car, happy birthday. What a birthday treat, it's excellent. See you later.